All right. Setting up a little windows there. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everyone. We're just going to take a few seconds just to let everybody join and then we will get started here. I hope you're all having a good morning. It's nice to see a bit of rain coming Isn't it in. Fantastic. Fresh air. Oh, yeah, you can open your windows again. Oh, it was so wonderful to open the windows and breathe oxygen for a change. <laughs> Not nearly as cold as a uh, smoky. Yeah. Well, while everyone's joining, I guess we will get started here. So welcome to Sketch Your World, a virtual family art workshop at Cascadia Art Museum. My name is Lauren Carroll Bolger, and I am the development and marketing manager here at Cascadia Art Museum. I am so excited to introduce you soon to Kathleen Moore and make art with you today. And Kathleen is going to be sketching some pieces and they are inspired by one of our previous exhibitions called Woodland Reverie, the art of Helen Loggi. Um, Helen, Helen Loggi was a Bellingham resident who became nationally known for her etchings of the Northwest landscape, particularly the highly detailed studies of trees within the natural environment of Washington state. So today, some of her, uh, we are inspired by her work and I know we're gonna be sketching some trees. But before I introduce you then to Kathleen, I just want to first go over a few tips for using Zoom for this webinar for today. Firstly, you should all be on mute. Please remain on mute throughout this workshop. If you have any questions at any time, please use either the chat or the Q&A feature. We will be able to see your questions and we can answer them from there. Also, if you have any technical issues during this time, please also use that chat feature to contact us. Well, I am pleased to introduce you now to Kathleen Moore. Kathleen Moore is a visual artist who paints with oil colors or soft pastels to capture moments of awe from vast stormy skyscapes to the intimate amazement by a single flower. She says the natural world has an overwhelming power to make you stop and reconsider your position and role on the planet. I paint to record a sensation of interconnectedness and fragility of life. This is why the arts are so important. They serve as reminders that we are once greater and lesser than we believe. <laughs> Challenging belief or what we believe we see is a reoccurring theme in the classes and workshops Moore teaches. And originally from Texas, Moore has lived in the Seattle area since 1990. So I am excited now to turn it over to Kathleen for you. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lauren. I'm really happy to be here with you guys today. Um, it's just, uh, we live in such a beautiful uh, world and we're often, uh, you know, going for walks or just going for a drive and you see something spectacular and beautiful and you think, oh, I'd love to capture that. And that's the wonderful thing about um, jumping in with a pencil and doing some sketches of our world to kind of record, you know, not only just what you're seeing, but kind of a sensation of just how inspiring our world is. So um, I'm glad you guys are here today. Uh, all you need for this workshop is some uh, paper and a pencil. And let me just switch my screen real quick here. So if you've got some sort of a sketchbook, you're welcome to use that, but you don't need that. You can just use some regular old printer paper if you want. But I do suggest that you take a few sheets of the paper, whatever you're working on, get a few sheets because when you have um, that kind of padding of multiple sheets, your pencil glides across the paper better and you can get a better um, feel for it rather than having it just on a hard old surface. So get a few sheets of paper. You'll also want one sheet of paper as a cover sheet 
so that you can put your hand on the cover sheet rather than smearing your drawing. So there's that. And then if you have just a regular old number two pencil, that will work just fine. If you would prefer to use, if you have some uh, drawing pencils, you are welcome to use drawing pencils. And I suggest staying within the B range. So get yourself like a B, a 2B and a 4B would work just fine if you wanted, if you had those. Um, oftentimes when I'm out sketching, all I have with me is a little tiny sketchbook and a mechanical pencil. And these things work just great too. So whatever you've got, any pencil will work. And then the next thing that you really ought to have is a decent eraser. Um, you can get by with these pink erasers on the back of a, of a yellow pencil. But if you have like one of these vinyl erasers, that works really well. <clears throat> and if you happen to have one of these kneaded erasers, they're these gray chunks of stretchy rubber. Those are super great to have around. And you will probably see me using this guy quite a bit. But any, any eraser will be fine. So let's take a look at a photograph that I took. Um, I was out on the peninsula a while back and we went along and, uh, on a trail and we saw some of these big, gorgeous, ancient uh, cedar trees. And so I've got this one here, and I think it's such a cool photo of that tree going up into perspective. So it's nice and wide down here where we're so close to the, the base of the tree. And as it stretches up into the sky, it tapers and gets narrower in perspective as it goes up. And I just think it's just such a, a gorgeous, gorgeous tree, ancient thing. And I also love the texture of the bark as it goes up in these nice striations and, and it's just got such beautiful texture. And so that's what I thought we would work on today is drawing this big, beautiful tree. And uh, let me go back here to this camera. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about drawing trees. And, you know, I teach a lot of classes and, um, and I do teach drawing trees quite a bit. And oftentimes when we don't really think too much about it, um, somebody says, oh, let's draw a tree. And the first thing that, um, that you do is make a trunk because that's very, um, very typical thing is we all know that trees have trunks. So we draw a trunk and we draw some branches, right? That come out, we all know branches come out from the trunk and they branch out from one another, get smaller and smaller, right? We all know that. And we've all been drawing trees like this forever, right? And then we know that it's got leaves on the tree so a lot of times we draw this sort of kind of zig, wiggly, ziggly circle or oval that represents the, the crown of the tree where the leaves are. So, okay, well, this is a pretty good um, start for a tree, but it tends to get to be sort of a, sort of a symbol of a tree. So what we'd like to do is be a little bit more observant we don't want to just see the kind of an outline of the leaves of the crown of the tree. We want to really get in there and look more carefully at what we're um, what we're observing. And, and if we look at our example here, this photograph, right? We see that this trunk, if we just draw kind of a symbol of a tree, what we see in the photo is that it's much wider at the base than it is at the top because it's going so high up in the air, right above our heads. And it becomes um, 
uh, it tapers in perspective. So let's take a look at that and let's take a look at how these branches come out of the trunk of the tree and how they curve upwards and zoom up on their own. So each one of these crazy curving branches of the old cedar tree are really interesting. So my, my uh, task today is to let's take a look at this big, beautiful cedar tree as an individual um, because every tree is different and we want to really start to look carefully at those trees that are maybe in our yards or in the park that we go walking in and notice them as individuals. They all have a wonderful sense of liveliness and gesture to them. They all are kind of doing a very slow motion dance of their arms reaching upwards. So that's what we really wanna capture when we go out and do some sketching and drawing. So um, I really want to, um, to answer your questions. If you have questions, uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, go ahead and go in that chat. I'll keep an eye on it and um, try to get to you. Sometimes I forget to look up, but I'll try to keep an eye on it. And if I, uh, if I don't uh, see your question right away, I know Lauren will pipe in and um, let me know. And uh, so use that chat or the um, question and answer thing. So, okay, so how do you start doing a sketch of a tree? And um, you know, the difference between a sketch and a full drawing is a sketch is usually more quickly done just to get the gist of the matter. And what I'm going to do is start out with a sketch to show you how you can capture the liveliness of a particular tree or anything that you're drawing really. And then go a little bit farther and think about it as more of a, a full drawing in case you wanted to take that sketch and move it into more of a, a, a developed drawing. I know Helen Logie, her work is just so inspiring to me and she captured the individualism of trees so wonderfully. And if you ever have a chance to take a look at her work, it's really spectacular. I really suggest you do that. Okay. So the first thing that I would do when I'm um, starting a sketch is I'm going to decide really kind of the space that I want that sketch or drawing to be in on my drawing paper. Um, sometimes I fill up the whole piece of paper with a drawing. And sometimes if I'm trying to keep it a little bit um, quicker, I will create a rectangle, rectangle in which I want my sketch to go. And so I decide how big that is. And I just mark it out. These are called construction lines. And eventually I'm probably going to get rid of those construction lines, but they just kind of help me um, see the, the, the whole of the sketch, right? So looking up at our photo reference, we can kind of get a sense of just the angle of that tree. If, I, if we put our pencil, like if you have your pencil here, and you draw it across your reference, or if you're outside at the park sitting there, you can lift your pencil up and hold it in front of your face and um, do the same thing to get that angle of how that tree tapers. So looking at that, then I'm going to grab my pencil and kind of get a feeling of that where I put my pencil, that straight line up and down, and then how that tree tapers so much way out here and it taper, tapers almost to a point right up here at the top. And it comes down and there's this part, look at this. There's this, if I hold my stick up straight up and down, there's that big 
chunk of the of this part of the tree trunk that sticks out more than the other. So I want to make sure that I get that in and it's at a slight angle and then it tapers outwards from up here and comes on down here like so. Now I am drawing very loosely and pretty lightly. I need to draw a little heavier than I normally would um, when I'm sketching for real because you need to see that on the camera. But if you hold your pencil over to the side so that the, if, you, if you hold it upright, like maybe you would do to sign your name, that's going to sort of put marks too heavily in your paper. If you hold it over, way over to the side and sketch with the side of the pencil lead, then the marks will be soft. And if you need to erase one, they will erase easily. If you hold your pencil like that, they will, it will be harder to erase. So let's keep the, the marks light and just start to capture the overall um, shape of our tree. Now, as we go, we need to be kind of sitting back and looking at what we're doing and looking at it as a whole, rather than just going about our business and drawing what we think we know about this tree. We wanna look both at our drawing and at the reference, right? So flick your eye back and forth and see if you're capturing the gesture of the tree. And I see that I need to put in just a little bit of a curving movement this way as that tree goes up. And then there's a branch that comes up here and a branch that angles here and then comes down like so. And another branch that goes out here and a little farther and then up. And let's see, we've got this branch and then we come down here about, you know, if I'm going to use my stick in my reference photo, I can make a mark there to the bottom. Find my thumbnail there and see if that's about halfway. It's a little farther than halfway. So I can say, okay, of my rectangle that contains my tree and mark it. Yep, that's about right. And that big old branch comes out, it comes up at an angle. It kind of goes back out like this. Notice something, what I'm doing is I'm not trying to create um, curves right away. Notice I am building up the curves using straight lines. And you can get a much more accurate sense of what the curve is doing if you build it up with straight lines and then come back and refine that down into a, a a nice curve. So build up your line, your curves with straight lines is much easier. All right. So we've got this good start to our tree. And I'm going to give these branches just a little more thought and care and find some smaller branches that are tapering off from there. And all the while, I'm still staying very loose and sketchy so that I can easily make adjustments as I go along. Okay, anybody have any questions? Does this make sense so far? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on my tree. Here we go. You can see that. All right, so now that we have the overall basic shape of the tree. Um, now I'm going to come back in and start looking at some of the specific 
features of the tree, one of which is this really cool knot right up here and how that bark swirls around the tree trunk and creates a really neat pattern. And before I really get involved in doing too much in the way of detail, um, I really just want to find the basic shape of that knot and find how the different portions of the tree trunk kind of fold into one another and just get some shapes down because the next thing that we're going to do is put in some light and shadow in our tree. Before we get started on all of that detail of the, of the tree, uh, the texture of the tree trunk. So whenever you're looking at um, an object, whether it be a tree or, um, or a cup or a ball or whatever it is, you want to look at it and start sketching with um, the idea that there is a light source. So you're looking for the light and the dark, the light and the shadow. So in this case, we're in the forest and the, the light is a little diffused because all of the tree branches, it's all sort of shadowy in the forest, right? But we can look at our reference photo here and we can start to notice that it seems that this side of the tree is a little more in shadow than this side of the tree. So what I'm going to do is start to put in a little bit of shadow on the right side of anything that curves around the tree. So the tree trunk has these sort of lobes that they go here and then here and then this portion, right? So each one of these needs to be shadowed just a little bit on the right side of that. And then this whole side of the tree is in some shadow. So I'm going to push that shadow in and that way the whole tree has some feeling of three-dimensional um, 3D, right? Because light is hitting it and then the light, uh, the form curves around and goes into shadow on the right side of the form. So go ahead and create some shadow. The, this is all very, again, loose and sketchy. We're going to get to detail later. We don't wanna to get to detail too soon or we might run into trouble. So as you can, as you do this, you can start to kind of feel that this tree has dimensional quality to it. It's three, it's round, it has 3D, um, uh, 3D-ness to it, three dimensionality. So we've got that going on. We have that kind of sketched in loosely and then we can start working on some of the detail in the sketch, right? Anybody have any questions? Tell me if you're if it makes sense. I hope it's making sense. Let me know if it's not. All right. So, all right. So let's go in real quick and just refine some of these branches and make them taper up. And if I need to, I can make them a little bit lighter by using my eraser in certain areas, looking, always flipping my eye back and forth between my drawing and the reference, back and forth, back and forth, so that I can have a feeling that um, if something is in the wrong place, I can adjust it pretty easily at this stage in the game. Before, you get too involved in your drawing and, and you've done all of the little teeny pine needles and all of a sudden you realize, oh, it's all in the wrong, all in the wrong place. Oh, that would be drastic, right? So we don't want that. Um, keep 
looking and keep adjusting as you need to. All right, so I'm going to push in some darks under that funny knot that goes around like so. And that branch comes out a little bit farther here. And as I get a little more detail here and there, I can start to get that kind of um, cool swirly effect of the bark and start drawing that in as I go. And I see that this comes swirling over right up here. Look at that pretty swirl as it comes around that portion of the tree trunk. And I can just get the curve of that in and start finding how it comes down that portion of the trunk. And up here, I can see there's a big strong swirl and branch coming up this direction. Get that in there just a little bit. And notice how right here, it all kind of swirls in the opposite direction. So I'm going to make some lines to show how that swirls in the opposite direction. And then it comes up here. Oh, this is such a cool tree. I know Helen would have loved to draw this tree. And um, I'm sure she would have done some spectacular etchings of this tree. I don't know, who knows, maybe she did see this tree at some point. Maybe she did do an etching of this tree, I don't know. It's a worthy one. These cedar trees live a long time. Okay, so coming on down, here's this big old branch. Actually, I think um, it comes down a little bit farther. And because I was very careful to not press my pencil point down in my uh, paper, I can make an adjustment fairly easily as I keep flicking my eye back and forth, back and forth between the drawing and my reference. So let's get that guy going here. And notice a really cool thing about this tree branch here, because it's a little bit farther down and closer to us, we can see some interesting things that happen. Tree branches are, um, they don't just stick out of the side of the, the trunk, right? What happens is they kind of bunch up a little bit right here. There's a collar here, and then they are thicker at the bottom here. And then it's all round, right? So this whole structure here that builds up that is thicker, that kind of supports and bolsters up the weight of this branch that comes out. And this whole structure is round because branches are round and the tree trunk is round. So a tree branch actually kind of looks like this as it comes out of a tree trunk. So when the next time that you go out into the yard and um, there's that big old tree out there, notice how the tree branches have this collar and this little portion here that helps structurally um, keep that big long branch up from keeping it from falling down. So that's what's going on right here in our drawing is this guy has this little collar structure right in here. You see it right there, right? And then it's wider down here. 
And that whole thing is fitting into the, um, the ribs of the bark as it comes on down. Hope you can see that in the photo. Actually, let me switch to the big reference for just a moment and we can take a closer look at that really cool branch right there. See that collar right there. And then it widens out and then it's, it's kind of just fits into the tree trunk. It's coming, it's actually coming. You know, this branch has been there for a lot of years and the tree keeps growing out, right? And so this branch actually kind of goes on in towards the center of the tree somewhat. And um, it has to do that to keep, keep the weight um, from falling down. So look at that structure. Look at these beautiful striations in the tree trunk. Take a good look at that. And then we'll go back to the table here. OK. So um, let's see, we've got that, uh, all of that tree trunk rolling around that branch and coming on up here and going on this side. And we've got this portion here that goes on up and swirls out like this. I'm going to strengthen this nice dark line as it comes down. And that beautiful texture comes up here, but we've got that shadow that's between this lump of the tree trunk and this lump of the tree trunk. So let's push that in just a little bit, make it a little bit darker. Because the, the important thing is when you're sketching, if you think about the shadow, the light and dark of the actual tree or whatever it is you're drawing and put that in first. You can always come back and do more with your, um, with the detail, the texture. Now look at this really cool knot right there. Ooh, look at that. Let's get the gesture of that bark as it goes up and around that cool knot. And we'll just give a hint of the direction. We're going to come back and do more detail as we develop the whole drawing. Okay, so this is looking kind of fun here. I noticed that there's another lump right here, right? So let's get that guy in. And I can see that it's a little bit across from this big dark branch and down a little bit. So a little across and down just a little bit. And that lump comes out. These cedar trees grow so for so many years and they're so tall and so big that they tend to create extra, um, extra sort of um, root sort of structures down at the base of the tree. They call them buttressing, and that just helps keep the tree from falling over because they're so big and heavy. So look for the structures that come out um, and make the base of the tree wider. Even though this, what we're looking at, it's going tapering upwards into perspective, we've got that sensation, but the tree also is wider at the bottom than it is at the top just to keep itself up. So, all right, we've got striations in the tree trunk, that beautiful um, texture. And we can now start working a little bit in some detail and be a little more careful and create that texture in the tree trunk, in the bark that kind of almost stringy quality of cedar bark. 
it's so pretty. We don't want to overdo it because we don't want it to get too dark. And if we do find that it's getting a little too dark, we can always come back with an eraser and pull a little bit of light out here and there. And don't worry about it. And let's keep going with that. One of the cool things that you can do is move your pencil kind of up and down while you're doing these striations of the tree bark, the cedar bark. That will give it that kind of shaggy quality. If you just did stripes, it would feel like stripes. Like I put in a few marks here just to kind of get the overall direction of the bark striations and it looks stripy. I don't, I'm not planning to leave it like that. I want my cedar tree to look like a cedar tree and have that shaggy sort of quality. So I can get that quality by moving my pencil up and down along the line of that, um, of the bark. And you see how that creates more of an interesting texture. And I'll just keep going along. Now I don't want these things to be exactly, I don't want each line to be exactly the same distance between one another. If that happens, it tends to make it look a little, uh, a little like a pattern, like artificial. So if, if it looks too stripey, uh, if it looks like each one of these lines are equal, too equal, just go back over it and make some marks to um, soften that sensation of, um, of a pattern. And we can see that this is starting to look like tree bark. And I wanna remind myself to keep this, these lines of the, of the bark going up and over that really cool knot. Ooh, look at that fun little baby knot right there. Let's push that dark in there. Now, this is getting pretty dark with all of my mark making on here. And remember, we wanted to make sure we caught the sensation that this is round and then this is another rounded form and then there's another rounded form. So we can, two things, push darks a little bit darker in here to separate this form from this. And again, separate that form from the one behind. And we can also come back and pull some of the light out over our mark making. And that will leave some of the mark making, but it will also create uh, more of a light, uh, like the light is hitting that part of the true trunk. So keep going. Do we have any questions? All right. Oh, good ex explanation. Thank you. <laughs> keep on going here. Uh, let's see. Um, and I see this little ridge coming up over here and down. Okay. And anytime you feel like you need to put bring light in, just draw your eraser down. If you have one of these um, vinyl erasers, they, they are very useful. You can draw with your eraser, you know. And sometimes if you have crumbs, um, if you have a soft brush, you can brush your crumbs away. But you know, um, as we are working on this and we're getting, we're developing the drawing more and more, I would suggest grabbing that cover sheet and starting to put your hand on it so that you don't start getting your hand into the graphite and um, smearing it all around. That's no fun. All right, so here we go. We've got some 
pretty nice bark going on here. We've got the dark here. Going to push it a little bit darker on this side of the tree. What I don't want to be left with really is a lot of outlines of the tree. I want it to have form, you know, roundness to it. So I want to dissolve outlines into, um, into the graphite, into the light and dark of the whole drawing. And that nice dark branch goes on up here. And notice, look at this here. So notice the, the, some of the straight lines that I used to create, to find the curve of this branch. They're still hanging out there. Well, because I used inside of my pencil lead um, and they are very softly drawn on the paper, I can come back with my eraser and clean up that curve. And it will be a really beautiful, pretty, and it won't be dug into the paper. I can keep adjusting things like as this branch goes up away from us, it tapers and gets smaller. And that initial drawing that I had going on there didn't do that. So I need to make an adjustment. And now it looks like it goes way up high like our reference shows us. And I'm just going to push that a little bit dark there. And okay, this is looking pretty good. All right, I think I'll do a little more darks right in here. If you do have drawing pencils, uh, a range of drawing pencils, you can come back in with a softer pencil. Now, I have been working with a 4B so that it's dark enough for you guys to see on the camera more easily. And um, normally I'd probably not be working with a 4B quite yet because as I, um, as I work, what I'm doing is building up darks. I don't wanna build up the darks too soon or else the whole thing is going to be really dark and um, I'll be fighting with that a little bit. So if you're using drawing pencils and you have a variety of um, hardnesses, start with sort of a 2B and then work your way to softer leads, which would be 4B, 6B, 8B that way. And uh, then you can, now I grabbed uh, a softer lead and I can work on some more of my darks, a little bit darker, little by little. And I want to get the shadow under this crazy weird knot a little bit darker. And the crevice between those structures of the tree. And I want this to come out nice and dark and curve up like so. And then there's dark back behind here. So I know Helen um, walked around in the forest a lot. I think her family had a, a pretty big chunk of property. And she spent a lot of time walking around in the forest and drawing trees. And I can relate to her. She just, you know, she just loved being out in nature and she really enjoyed those crazy weird trees um, that grow around here. 
and she did such beautiful artwork. I, I remember going to the exhibit there at the museum and uh, seeing her sketches and her etchings. And I was just, I just wanted to stay there all day. I wanted to come back day after day just to look at her beautiful drawings. And I'm thinking, well, what is so interesting about her drawings? And it's sort of one of those things that she really did capture her love of those trees. You could tell she loved them because she took time to draw them. Every one of those trees was an individual. And sometimes we don't really realize, you know, how long these trees live and that they really are these individual, almost creatures. I was reading this amazing book. I wish I had thought to write down the author for you, but um, let's see, what was it called? The Secret Life of Trees, something like that. And he explains how trees are interconnected and they communicate with one another through their root systems. And I thought, okay, that's really weird. That's how do trees communicate? Well, apparently um, science has proven it out that they do communicate via various, um, various things with chemicals and, and such, but they can kind of tell one another that, you know, there's a threat to the environment and they, brace themselves for it. I better not yap too much. I'll lose you guys with I with all of my interest in those um, the communication of trees. But if you have a chance, get the book and and take a look. It's really fascinating. Trees are amazing. All right. So I can see that I want to move the direction a little bit differently there. Always be willing to make a correction in your drawing. It's uh, if you if you keep looking at it from a distance and um, and if you see that there's something that needs to be adjusted, go ahead, do the adjustment. That's a good thing. All right. Let that go cruising around that direction. And I'm not going to spend too much more time. Maybe I'll come back to it on the, the texture of the bark. I think it's coming along okay. And I can always come back and um, strengthen some little bits and bobs to make it more, um, make it a little stronger. But before I go too much farther, I want to, um, First, strengthen some of these branches over here, and then we're going to get to those leaves. Now, I know sometimes um, students are so fascinated by the leaves of a tree because they're so pretty that that's the first thing that they draw. But really, they, they're a little bit of a detail. And if you overdo the detail too soon, you get yourself into sort of a a pickle while you're drawing your the rest of the object and let's see that actually comes around like that so we don't want to get too involved in detail too soon we need to get the structure of the whole thing in which we've done a good job here so far and let's go ahead and start working on some of these pretty um, leaves here. And what I'd like to call your attention to is um, the direction that they that they go. So they have they're not just a wah, 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 wah at, up there. They have this movement. And when you're out and looking at trees and sketching trees, Look for the movement and the overall pattern of the, of the leaves. Notice that they, 
they all go out like this in sort of a fan shape, right? You can't see that very well. Um, the whole pattern goes out into a fan shape in little tiny clumplets. And each one of the clumplets is sort of a little tiny fan shape. And they're pretty subtle. See that? They're pretty subtle right here, right? And you can create that feeling with just moving your pencil in a radial pattern like this and keeping the pencil laying over again, almost against the paper and then moving your pencil in a, the back of your pencil in a radial pattern like that. And that will create the little clump of leaves. So we're going to do that here and notice that there's, there's that little clump right in through here. And then there's this clump that kind of goes up this way. So I want to do some feeling of those leaves that are very soft against the sky. There's a lot of light coming through those little clumps. So they're not too defined, but they're there. They're there against the sky. And we wanna just get that feeling. Okay, so I'm not, I do not want to draw little things. I want to make it soft and loose with just the hint of that shape of those little teeny little clumps of leaves. And I'm moving my pencil rapidly and kind of loosely to get that, that lacy quality of those leaves. And I'm going to bring those back through under here. And the leaves get a little more dense behind this branch, which allows the branch to feel much lighter in value than maybe another branch. So I can push my marks a little bit harder to create that darkness of the density of leaves back behind here. Any questions? So far, so good? Oh boy. Oh boy. As the leaves get farther and farther out, you could go a little bit looser and a little bit lighter with your mark making so that they feel kind of in the distance. You can also add a, a few little branch marks. Okay, I wanted to strengthen the this dark branch here a little bit. And you can make a few marks that show some branches coming down that these leaves are attached to. Don't overdo it, keep it pretty light and soft there like so. Okay, and then there are some, branch, the, some leaves that overlap the tree. 
and I want those to be a little bit darker. And then as they come over here, I want them to be dark behind the tree. And start all over again. I want those marks to show the direction and the gesture of those little clumps of leaves. But the whole clump, the big clump of leaves has a gesture too, and it curves like so. Now, I usually keep my drawing in the same direction for your um, for the camera, but you are certainly welcome to move your drawing paper around if you find that it's easier to make marks in a certain direction and you're trying to do it all upside down. Just move your paper around, but you have to kind of keep track of where you want those marks to end up. So. Keep track of that, but moving paper around makes life easier sometimes. So I'm going to keep going with my pretty little leaves and build up some dark where they're kind of in shadow. And maybe make some of them a little more, um, a little stronger. For the moment, I'm pretty much ignoring those trees in the background. You could put those in if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to leave them off. I'm just doing sort of a portrait of this one ancient cedar tree. And again, I'm going to look for areas that I can um, put in a few branches, some of those little twigs that curve around and are so interesting on cedar trees that they go every which direction. Alrighty, so now I'm going to come back through and take care of adjusting my values. I want this branch to be nice and dark like it is up on my reference photo. So I'm going to push a little more dark in there, give it a little bit more roundness um, down at the bottom of the branch, a little bit more shadow side of the form on down here. Now I'm really kind of pushing a little bit harder and I'm using a softer lead. In fact, I'm going to move over to my um, very soft lead and push in those darks a little bit more strongly, really hit the darks where I want them to be really um, dramatic. Dark is a great thing against light to create drama. If you want a nice dramatic drawing, good strong dramatic drawing, 
you've got to put in enough darks so that the lights sparkle. And uh, you can't be afraid of adding darks. And once you get used to adding really strong darks here and there in a drawing, you'll say, oh, look at that. That makes the light so sparkly and gorgeous. I'm going to put darks in all of my drawings. Some people are afraid to put the darks in the drawing. And um, yeah, once they, once they learn to do it, they're always amazed how pretty the drawing becomes with good strong darks. Now you see how that little bit of area is more sparkly looking, right? Because I pushed that really strong dark back behind there. Now it's, now it's interesting, right? And I can push a little bit more dark in a clump of leaves and make this branch come forward just a little bit more. And if I want even more division of space between the branch and the leaves behind, I can pull out just a little bit of light at that top corner edge of the branch. Now we've got that. I can manipulate the darks and the lights um, to make my drawing more dramatic. And be very careful of where those lights and darks go. And I can alternate, like when I want this branch to go dark as it curves upwards here, then I might take my eraser and pull out a little bit of the value in the branches in those leaves so that the dark contrasts against a little bit lighter foliage there. All kinds of sneaky tricks when you're doing drawings this way. So, um, Helen's work, um, she does so many etchings and uh, the etchings come out looking a lot like pen and ink drawings because such strong contrast between the white of the paper and the lines of the ink. And um, that's also a wonderful um, way to, to sketch when you go out and look at your world is try to draw things with pen and ink. It's challenging, but oh, what a wonderful challenge it is. Okay, so I'm going to push the darks in the leaves back behind the tree trunk up here because I really want, I want the eye to go from down here. So we got all of this cool texture going on here. We've got this old knot that's very dark. And then we've got a line of good strong dark going right up here and kind of curving in. And I want the eye to travel all the way up the tree. So I want to have enough light up here that the eye really looks, looks up there. I want the sparkle to happen up here too. So push the darks in a little bit darker, do a little bit more with those amazing curves of the bark as it goes up. Give the eye something to be fascinated by with these marks that I'm making. Ooh, cool. And I think maybe I'll pull just a little bit of value out right through here. The eraser is a drawing tool. It's not just a mistake correcting tool. So 
every time you draw, if you are really focused on the light and dark, then it becomes an interesting, um, an interesting drawing to really focus on the lights and the darks and make them really sparkle. So always use your eraser to create those beautiful um, places where there's a little bit of sparkle of sunshine and then darkness, shadow, I should say, back and forth. going on up there and this tree branch is a little bit lighter, but maybe not, don't want it to be too light. Put a little bit of value over it. Okay, I'm just going on and on and talking and I'm hoping this makes sense. I'm not seeing any questions up here, I guess. You guys are really busy drawing, which is wonderful. So feel free, you know, if you have a question or a comment, please let me know. Okay. Yeah, that's working. That's working. I want a little bit more, a little stronger texture coming down here. I pulled some of the light out in this area, um, but I want to strengthen some of the texture. So I've got to go kind of carefully bringing it on up like so. And need to like so. And I see that I want to get some of these leaves a little darker than I originally put them in. So I'm going to do the same thing, that same movement with my pencil, but I'm using, in this case, a little bit um, softer lead and it's going to be a little bit darker. Even if you have just one pencil, it's just a 2B, you can still go back and here, I'll grab a 2B here and put some more marks in and you build up the darks, right? So you can just build that up. Keeping that overall little fan shape of your mark making. Oh, let's see. When thinking about the smaller branches, how do you decide what to include versus what to leave out? What detail is sort of too fine? Oh, what a fabulous question. So um, basically, if you try to keep, keep everything simple, right? So start out with the simplest amount of detail, the least amount of detail possible. And build up just to the point where it reads what you're trying to say, right? So like this clump of leaves that I've got going on here, I did a little bit very faintly. And as I come back, I wanted to get a little stronger feeling of those leaf clumps. So I come back and I add a little bit more. But if you can if you can start with the super simple shapes and then add just enough detail so that it talk, it says what you want it to say, then you're good. Um, that's the key. Super simple shapes and then add the detail until you're, until it's, you know, keep, keep looking, keep leaning back, keep looking at it and saying, is that enough? Do I need a little bit more, right? Um, like this one little branch right here. Well, that's pretty good, but you know, I think it needs a little um, addition here, a little bit more, 
it was just by its little lonesome self. And I think it was more interesting to add another branch next to it softly. Um, and the other thing that um, kind of along those lines is value. So the value can almost act as detail to give it more variety of what you're looking at um, without drawing little teeny little branches and such. Um, so always lean back and look for um, areas that you might need to um, push darker or pull a little bit lighter. Like right in this area here, I wanted those leaves to be dark to um, kind of talk about the shape of this, this um, part, portion of the upper portion of the tree trunk. And I pushed them in against the tree trunk a little bit too much. So I need to make an adjustment there. And I also made these, this leaf area uh, quite a bit too dense. So um, that's what I'm saying. Small, little, simple shapes are what you're really looking for. And then um, adjust with a tiny bit of detail to make it say what you want it to. I hope I answered your question. What details sort of too fine? Um, that is how much detail is very personal actually. Some people just go to town with detail. Um, I like a little bit looser um, quality to my drawings. So while I really love detail, I don't put real tight detail in my work. Maybe I put a little smidgen of tight detail in just a key place. And when you do that, it tends to, um, the, the viewer's eye says, oh, I know what you're doing there and kind of fills in the rest for you. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. It's something about how our brains see something and then fill in, um, fill in. We, we kind of assume we know what we're looking at. Well, our viewers are doing the same thing. They kind of assume they know what they're looking at in your drawing when you put just a little bit of detail in. For instance, I just, let me kind of zoom in here. Whoops, wrong way. All right. <clears throat> when you zoom right in, look, it's just a bunch of schmeary grays, right? But if you overdo it, it's, it, 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 it can be overwhelming to your viewer. But if you give just a little hint, and then leave the rest off of what's of the detail. I put in some little marks that says to the viewer, this tree branch has some of the same sort of striations as the bark, right? And it just starts to curve over. And then I'm gonna leave the rest of it off. And the viewer's mind will say, oh, that whole thing is has these striations where I don't overdo the drawing with all of those striations there. Okay. So let me zoom back out. There we go. And let's see. So um Let's see, so I can come back in with this pencil and play around with creating a little bit more of that in and out of that bark because I have enough time 
in this session to do just a little more finer detail, not overload it, but just strengthen certain areas that need a little more interest. And while I'm doing it, I'm always looking for how to strengthen that relationship between the light side of something and the dark side of something, the shadow side. That's the key to a nice strong drawing. Now, when I am drawing with silver point, which is one of the, uh, a medium that I really enjoy working with, you can't really erase with silver point. So you have to really plan your drawing very carefully and not overdo your darks too soon <laughs> and build up to them very lightly and gently so that um, uh, you, you retain the brightness of your lights. So that's kind of a tricky thing, but it's, it's so much fun. Silver point is drawing with a silver wire. And it makes a mark on certain, certain substances. Um, a gessoed panel, it'll make a mark on. And um, certain, certain things it will mark on, but not just regular paper. And uh, it's, it's really a beautiful medium. It actually tarnishes. So if you draw with uh, the silver, it puts silver on your on the surface, and then over the course of oh, it just depends a lot on your uh, the weather conditions, how much moisture is in the air and such. Um, but it will tarnish it over the course of about a week. It will become a little bit darker than when you first put that silver mark down on your paper, on your uh, surface. It's really a fascinating medium, but you have to be careful to just build up your texture and your value. Okay, so that is my old cedar tree. And I could probably spend another half hour on it before I'm calling it, but I'm liking what's going on. It's got some really interesting textures, lights and darks going on in it. I like the, the leaf pattern coming out here so soft and gentle. Um, I think I could uh, soften some of these a little bit more by turning my paper around. But anyway, that is taking a sketch, you know, you start sketching and then you build up your textures and really with the thought of light and shadow of all of the things that you draw will make a beautiful, strong drawing. So um, I really do want to open it up and I wanna look at this chat window here and let me know what you're, how you're doing, how your drawing has come along. If you were drawing along with me, um, ask me questions. You've got another just a few minutes to go and I'd like to answer anything I can. So tell me you guys, how's it going? Somebody's got to jump on there and answer. How's it going? Good, yay, Marlene. <laughs> oh, are you having fun drawing? You got a bit heavy with the 8B, but trying to make up for it? Oh, cool. Yeah, just get in there with that eraser and, and pull it out. Um, if you have a kneaded eraser, there's a really cool thing that you can do. Um, I'll just do it right up in here. Make it into a point 
and tap it. Notice what happens up here. As I tap, I can pull out some of that dark little by little and make it lighter and then kind of fold the eraser over, make another point and tap. And that way I can lift out some value very gently without like <laughs> rubbing it out, right? And I still have the texture that I had put in, but it's a little bit lighter. So I can do that anytime I get too strong of a value someplace, just tap it out. Let's see. Um, the bottom of my trunk seems a little too big. Oh, did it get really super wide? Well, don't worry about that. I mean, gosh, think about it. If, if you were standing really close to the tree and kind of like hugging it a little bit, it would be really big, right? But you would still look up, up the tree and it would still in perspective get narrower. So don't tell anybody, it'll be fine. Um, would you use the same fan technique to draw leaves of a deciduous tree, such as a maple? Um, pretty much um, very similar, but you might make marks that are a little, well, if you are just getting some of those uh, leaves that are kind of at the edges of the crown of the tree and they're kind of separating a little bit like a big leaf maple you might make them a little bit more of a um of a form right that you can kind of get a sensation of big leaf maple leaves and you know they're they're doing all these really cool things they're kind of making these ovally shapes and sometimes they're hanging down and sometimes they're kind of in these cup shapes right so don't get over over um overdone with the shapes but you can certainly get it these variations of shapes gently with your pencil and of course it all has to do with how far away you are from the tree you know if you're drawing a branch that's really close up and you want more detail you would you want to make those maple leaves be a little more maple shaped. But overall, very similar to this, but thinking of the overall um, direction and pattern of the tree. And again, like I say, how far away are you from that tree? If it's off across, you know, across the, the field, right? it's going to be off and you just see the whole shape of the tree with very little detail, but the overall shape of the tree is there. And then if it's a little bit closer in, you do a little bit more detail, a um, little separation of the leaves. Hope that helps. Let's see. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to call it um, a cool drawing here. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you guys keep drawing. I wish you would um, have a lot of fun going out into your yard and um, or in the park or wherever and doing lots and lots of drawings. Check out those beautiful trees, really celebrate the, the beauty of, uh, of our environment. So thank you so much and um, hope to see you guys in another class sometime. If you want to know a little bit more about me, um, my email, my um, website address is below on the screen there, KathleenMoore.com. And I throw it back over to Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kathleen. That was a wonderful workshop. And thank you all for joining us virtually. Before you go, I just have a few quick little announcements. As you leave this webinar, you should be asked to participate in a quick survey. We would please ask you to do this. It's really helpful for us. We love hearing your feedback for all this and we really greatly appreciate if you do this. Also, if you um, want to do this workshop again, it will be on Facebook. Secondly, Cascadia Art Museum is now open to the public, which we're really excited about. 
So if you're looking for another, well, it's not as rainy now, but if you're looking for another safe rainy day activity or just want to come on by, we are open this weekend and we're open now from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday through Sundays. We have three brand new exhibitions for you, which we're really excited for you to be able to see. Um, and you can also see on our website more about all the safety precautions that we're taking. And lastly, we have more exciting free virtual events coming up for you, including a lecture called What's Age Got to Do With It by Dory Gillum. Um, and it's hosted by Humanities Washington. And that's going to be on October 3rd. So if you're interested in that, you can head over to our website to sign up for that free lecture. And we also have another upcoming virtual art workshop, which will be at the end of October. That one is not on our website yet, but you're the first to know about it. So keep a lookout for that one. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Kathleen. And thank you all for joining us here on this Saturday morning. It was great to have you and make art with you all. So Oh, and I just saw one last question. Helen's last name is Loggie, L-O-G-G-I-E. And if you go to Cascadia Art Museum's website, if you look on past exhibitions, you'll find some more information about that as well. So great. Well, thank you, Kathleen. And thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks, Lauren. Bye, everybody. Keep drawing. <laughs>